So today we are going to be looking at decals and how to create them, what they are and how we use them. Now I'm going to show you different types of decals today. Um, how you use them is totally up to you, but they are a super powerful and super useful tool in creating more believable worlds. So what is a decal? Well, a decal essentially is like a stamp and you put like a sticker or stamp on your level to create uh, unique artifacts of your uh, environment. So for example, if you want to add like a crack here, rather than texture the whole wall differently, you just make a decal or a stamp or a sticker to stick onto the wall to make it look like there's a crack there. We can also do this uh, quite commonly. We use it for uh, blood splatters, bullet holes, and things of that nature too. So you can also spawn them into the world as you wish. So how do we actually create a decal? Well, a decal is essentially just a material put onto a, a special component. So let's have a look what we've got here. So I've imported a couple of uh, textures already. Um, anything will do. This is just going to show you how to do this. And the first thing we're going to do is, after we've imported them, is look for the, the decal in the modes box at the top here. So in the search box, just type in decal, and you'll see deferred decal. And you can click and drag this into your world. Now a few things to note about how decals work. So decal comes up by default with this green box and the green box in itself has a little purple arrow pointing down. So this arrow indicates which direction the decal will be facing. Pointing down mean, meaning that the decal will appear on the floor. And at the moment we haven't got a decal attached to it so we get this default uh, temporary image I guess to appear. Um, but we will replace that obviously with our own in a moment. So a few things about decals we should know. Decals can only face one direction and be posted and um, be pasted in one direction. So for example, this one's pointing down. If I move it onto the wall, notice how it stretches along the wall. Another benefit of uh, decals is because they are pointing down, we can drag this onto here. And if I increase the bounds of this green box, I can make blood splatter, for example, spill over the edge and onto the floor here if I wanted to. Obviously we'll get this effect, but there's a way around this and I'll show you that probably in a later video um, as it's a bit more advanced. So how do we actually create a decal image? Well, a decal image is similar to a material with a few critical differences. So let's get started on making our own. So I'm going to start off with this stain here that I've got. This simple stain texture that I downloaded. And I'm going to right click on it and choose create material. And I'm going to call it stain1 underscore decal. And I'll open this one up. So as I said, decals are just materials with a few settings changed. And the settings you need to change are on the actual material output itself. So click on this big brown box and in the bottom left you'll see material domain and it says surface. Click on that drop box and you'll see deferred decal. Now as soon as you do that the image will disappear and you'll get an error message. And this is telling you that it needs the blend mode to be translucent. Now that is just one of the limitations of Unreal and the way it works. You have to have decals in translucent mode. So click on the brown main output again and underneath where we just changed it to deferred decal you'll see blend mode saying opaque and this has to be translucent for this to work and the image should reappear excellent so for my stain it works best for a stain to have a alpha background okay so it has this one's a png so it has an alpha layer and i'm going to use that alpha layer to hide the bits that I want to see. And the alpha layer on the texture sample is this bottom pin here, this grey one here. That means alpha. Drag this over to opacity. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change it so it doesn't go to base colour and instead goes to emissive colour. This is because it's now a translucent material. We want it to show a bit crisper and look a bit clearer and it works better if it's emissive, meaning it glows a little bit. Click apply and then you can close this down 
And what we can do with our decal here is drag over our stain one decal onto the decal domain there. And you can see the decal now appears. And if I rotate this around 90 degrees, and again another 90 degrees in that axis, and move it along the wall, I can paste it onto the wall. And I can scale it how I like. And that will stretch and change the image based on my desires. Like so. And you can see the decal is now on the wall. You can see that stretching occurring because we're only facing one way. We're not facing this way. Uh, you get stretching. Okay. So it's literally like a stamp, like a projection onto the wall. But you minimize these side bits, an easy fix for doing that is to simply move it so it only just clips through the wall, like so. There you go. And that's roughly how decals work. Now there's a few things we can do with decals. And uh, one thing we can use them for, as I said, are like signage and bullet holes and things like that. So let's show you how to do signage. Now the issue we have with decals is they have a couple of limitations. And that is mostly because they are translucent, they are affected by non-static lighting. So things like the skylight or di uh, any kind of uh, directional light you've got going on by default will affect the decal. Fortunately, there is a way around this. So let's show you the problem that we've got. If I go to this poster I've got here, I'm going to make a material out of this, create material, and open it up, I'm going to do exactly what i just done for the stain, so I'm going to change this over to a deferred decal, make it translucent because it has to be, and I can also put the opacity on even though this texture doesn't have an opacity layer. So you can see the problem with the translucent is that it makes the image slightly see-through, which isn't ideal because this is a poster, it's not meant to be see-through at all, it's not like a blood splatter or a stain or anything where you can see the original uh, material underneath it. It's meant to be opaque. And if I put this into the game, drag another deferred decal in, I'm just gonna rotate it and scale it and pop in my poster. Take it around. And you can see already the issue we've got is that you get this sort of translucent, see through ish uh, image, which isn't what you want. You want to get the full image that you just downloaded and use it as an actual poster. So, how do we do that? Well, we use a thing. Uh, do I really have it open? No. Uh, we use a thing called a debuffer and a debuffer is a different way of rendering the uh, texture that we assign and we can change this buffer over on the bottom left where we've been doing our changes so far you'll see decal blend mode and it says translucent we can actually change this to debuffer translucent color normal and roughness click on that one and this time you'll see emissive color gets grayed out so we need to hook this up to base color and click apply. So now when you put it into the world, it should be more solid like so. And that's how you get solid decals. And as I said, they're great for making posters or signage. So if you want to put warning signs or arrows on the walls or graffiti, decals are really useful for creating just that. And I can do whatever I like with this thing, okay? And you can see it in game, it's nice and solid, like an actual poster, okay? So that's how you get around that. Now, if you're following along, you may have the issue of debuffers not showing as an option down the bottom here. The solution to that is to enable it in the project settings. So go to edit, project settings, and when it loads up, you will find in the rendering section, and you can just search for it. We can search debuffer. 
you want to make sure debuffer decals is turned on okay this may restart the editor but once it's restarted you'll see those options appear down here okay um, and that's roughly it really um, for decals I'll do another video later on of how to fix it so you don't get stretching on uh, unwanted surfaces but for now that will do if you have any questions for decals or anything else down down below put a comment in and don't forget to also like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time thanks for watching catch you later bye bye hi everyone if you do like these videos and you have liked what I've done in the past and want to see what else I can do um, all your support is greatly appreciated on YouTube however I do have a patreon set up as well where you can support me even further money donated by yourselves will help me make better videos and better content um, and more frequently hopefully plus it will help me develop my own projects currently I'm in a project at the moment and I'll hopefully be able to share that with you uh, sh soon um, if you do so, to, uh, choose to donate and subscribe to us on Patreon, uh, you do get access to videos two weeks ahead of time, plus there are many other rewards available to you too. So head on over to www.patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, and uh, thank you for your support, and I'll see you next time. Bye.